Hello, this is Dr. David Green, CEO of the Georgia Pain Network. Today's topic is what you need to know about plantar fasciitis. Plantar fasciitis involves an irritation of the ligament that connects your heel to your toes. This is a flat band of tissue called the plantar fascia. It's caused by straining this ligament that supports your arch. Repeated strain can cause tiny tears in the ligament, which can then lead to pain and swelling. It's the most common cause of heel pain. It affects millions of Americans. It's very common in middle age, but can also occur in younger people like soldiers or athletes due to repetitive overuse. So risk factors include excessive pronation with feet rolling inward, overuse or trauma, high arches, flat feet or Achilles tightness, obesity, ill-feeding footwear, and good old aging where you lose your soft tissue elasticity. It's pretty common in soldiers who are on their feet a lot. What are the symptoms? Well, it's usually an aching, sharp, or burning pain in the sole of your foot. Uh, foot pain most commonly when stepping out of bed in the morning. Swelling, redness, or feelings of heat. Heel pain resolves after walking for a while, and then it typically comes back later in the day with a vengeance. So the workup includes past health, such as what illnesses or injuries, symptoms that are being experienced, activity level, uh, x-rays may show a stress fracture as opposed to uh, plantar fasciitis, and then in atypical cases an MRI or CAT scan may be necessary to fill, uh, finish the workup. Uh, initial treatment options include rest and ice, anti-inflammatories by mouth, a stretching regimen, a towel works really well, especially first thing in the morning um, using either one of these uh, flexible bands or a towel to go around the foot and stretch it out. Um, night splints to keep the Achilles in uh, neutral position while you sleep and then new shoes with good arch support and cushioned sole and oftentimes doctors prescribe heel cups or orthotics. Laser therapy has some small studies that have shown positive results. Extracorporeal shockwave therapy is ESWT. That was FDA approved back in 2000. However, it's mostly self-pay as studies have been inconclusive. Most insurance companies don't pay outright for it. Uh, various injections are available. Corticosteroid injections can be used but should be used with caution because if you use them too much they can absorb some of the fat in the foot and cause um, a dent there. PRP is being used very successfully for um, plantar fasciitis. That's platelet-rich plasma therapy and then stem cell therapy um, has also been shown to help patients avoid surgery and get pain relief. Experts in the past thought that heel spurs cause plantar fasciitis. And a lot of surgeries were done unnecessarily, but now experts generally believe that heel spurs are the result and not the cause of plantar fasciitis. Many people with large heel spurs never have heel pain or fasciitis, so surgery to remove heel spurs now is rarely done. What are the outcomes? 95% of plantar fasciitis patients are successfully treated without surgery. At least six months of conservative treatment should be attempted first. And the release of the plantar fascia is not um, the greatest surgery, so it should be an absolute last resort. The top non-operative pain management in Georgia is through the Georgia Pain Network. There are over 10 clinics throughout the state accepting over 50 insurances and providing over 25 treatment options with the board-certified doctors. Visit us online today at georgiapainnetwork.com and then call us for more information and scheduling at 404-850-9099. I'm Dr. David Green with the Georgia Pain Network. Your pain stops here.